evening and welcome to the Northampton School Committee for Thursday, August 8th, 2013. I'm Mayor David Narkowitz. I'll ask the clerk to call the roll of the school committee, please. Mr. Osborne, Mr. Duval. Present. Mr. Randall Here. Mr. Howard Moore. Here. Mr. Stephanie Here. Mr. Andrew Shelton. Here. Mr. Evans. Present. Present. Thank you very much. And before we move on, I also wanted to uh, acknowledge and welcome our new interim superintendent, Regina Nash, who is uh -huh. attending her first school committee meeting. Um, welcome. Thank you very much. Um, we now have the public comment period. Is there anyone here who wishes to offer uh, public comment? Oh, excellent. If you could just identify your your name and address for the uh, folks at home. Um, hi there, I'm Jen Ramsey and I work at NCTV. I'm the Media Resources Coordinator and I'm just here to let you know about a couple of events going on. Um, we have Cinema Northampton, which is a public screening of um, different movies. We're going to be starting our first one August 16th, which is next Friday. Um, the field opens at 7 p.m. and the show starts at 8.30 p.m. and that's in the back of the high school in the football field. Um, and, and there'll be concessions, hot dogs, and uh, popcorn and, and candy for people to purchase that will benefit the uh, Northampton Athletic Boosters. Um, so that's August 16th, 7 p.m. Movie starts at 8.30, open to everyone, free. Um, and it's gonna be on a big screen with a big PA, so it's gonna be really fun. Princess Bride is the movie. I don't know if I mentioned that. Um, and we're gonna be doing probably a few more before the end of the summer. Um, and then one more thing I wanted to let you know about is uh, we're doing a week-long workshop for teens, a movie-making workshop, um, and they're going to learn everything from pre-production to production and maybe a little post-production, but the goal is to put together a little short film in a week, um, and that's going to be August 26th to 30th. It's open to ages 13 to 18, and they have to sign up through me. Um, they can find information on our website. We're also going to put flyers out, but they can call the station at 413-587-3550. And uh, yeah, it's going to be really great. That's it. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else who wishes to speak during the public comment session? Hearing none, I will then ask if any school committee members have any announcements they'd like to make. Okay, hearing none, we'll move on then to the next item, which is our recommended actions. Um, tonight's uh, consent agenda votes uh, uh, include uh, the approval of minutes of the Rules and Policy Subcommittee meeting of September 9th, 2012, the Budget and Property Subcommittee meeting of October 1st, 2012, School Committee meeting of June 13th, 2013, Special School Committee meeting, June 27, 2013. Special School Committee meeting, July 2, 2013. And the School Committee meeting of July 11, 2013. We also have several contracts uh, needing approval. Uh, the first is uh, for Allen Marini flooring, uh, $5,600. Simplex Grinnell, uh, which is the city's sprinkler maintenance, $4,493.25. Alston Supplies, $24,641.61 uh, for custodial cleaning supplies. Kelco Products, $12,882.06 uh, cleaning supplies again. Uh, Transfluenci, uh, $24,000. This is a three year district wide translation service contract. Mount Holyoke College, $10,500 professional development math leadership courses, and Mary Porcino, $6,800, Reader's Workshop Liter Literary Literacy Professional Development. Could I have a motion to, ex oh, and, uh, excuse me, we also have two other, uh, one other item, excuse me, uh, the NHS cross country team, uh, the Moore Hill Outdoor Education Center, Shootsbury, Mass. This is a field trip request, August 24th through 25th, 2013. <coughs> Could I have a motion can I, can to? Can I make a motion just to take out the Mount Holyoke College um, out of the, the vote because it's, I, I can't vote on that one. It's a okay. conflict of interest. So Certainly we can remove that one from the okay. consent agenda. Um, yes? I'd like to remove the field trip, the cross-country team's field trip, if we could. Certainly. 
if I might correct the spelling, it's Morse Hill, M-O-R-S-E. Okay. Oh, yes, Morse Hill, okay. Uh, okay, so then uh, the vote would be on the consent agenda with the removal of the uh, Mount Holyoke College contract and the uh, field trip request. I'll move to approve. Second. Second. All those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, so that consent agenda carries. Um, uh, uh, now, um, could I ask for a motion to approve uh, the Mount Holyoke contract? Move to uh, approve. Okay. Second. Okay. Is there any discussion on this? And just noting that Mr. Flynn is recusing himself from that particular vote. Um, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, and then finally, um, a motion to approve the f uh, field trip request. Move to approve. Second. Okay. And Ms. Minnick, did you have uh, questions regarding that? I did. Actually. We do have the athletic director here. If you have questions, specific questions. Mr. Miller is here. Um, this looks very similar or it, it looks like the coaches are trying to replicate what has been uh, a wonderful experience experience and team building um, outing for the cross country yes. team in the past we, years without benefit of a cool house in Vermont. Right. Uh, we last year, uh, last year we did not go to Vermont because with the new policies of having children stay at people's houses well and covering the insurance, we did not do it last year. But in the previous eight years before that, Jim Clayton was the coach and we used his, his places up in Stratton. So this year we just hired some new coaches uh, in the last couple of weeks and they, they were part of the program, knew what it was like and wanted to do something similar, it came from a parent. And on that request, since I was very late getting the information from the coaches, that's why I was in here now, just to approve the overnight stay, providing that we have all the chaperones, transportation, and everything is all taken care of before they go. Can you describe the campsite to me? Is this tent? I, I do not know the camp, but it's in Shrewsbury. There's a, in the, I think on the, in the agenda, or the letter I sent, there was a website mm -hmm. that you could click on okay. and you could look at that information. Okay, which I did not do. I apologize. It's a well-established, well-reputed um, program. I've known about it for years. I think one of, uh, one of the concerns, is, so you feel comfortable that this is well, that it's a slightly different situation and I just was concerned about the ability to monitor the number of students that would be going on the thing, first of all. And secondly, I've had some people contact me about um, mosquitoes, Tripoli and West Nile, and whether it's advisable for students to be out camping after dusk in this environment. We could also include to have the proper insect repellent. I think that's all they're doing now is just staying, try and stay out. I think the agenda or their their itinerary is to run in the morning, late late morning, early <coughs> in, in the afternoon. That would not pertain, pertain to the mosquito incidents, but they could always spray up and stuff like that, which I think the Board of Health is requiring everybody to do or asking them to do. So they'd be aware of that. I would make it aware, make them aware that, that sh they should be doing that. Do you have any any sense of whether the students are excited about this opportunity or whether they are, are was, ambivalent? Or? There's been a Facebook page going on between, there's a couple junior girls, it was actually brought to, to my attention by a parent of one of the girl runners, who is, I think she's going to be a junior this year, and is the mother that knew about this camp, has gone to that camp and thought it'd be a great idea for the team building. Getting more used to the new coaches and things like that. So they brought it to my attention, and the coaches, I asked for some information from the coaches, which I, that's why I've given you, and that's all I can answer. So it's initiated you don't know by the students' me. reaction to it at this point. I think most of the students, I think one of the stu a student probably initiated with the, with the mother and started talking to <coughs> the friends. And I don't know how many people will be going, but it seems like it's a, they want to keep the tradition going. And the letter they sent to me was they want to continue the tradition doing something like this that they used to do at the at Stratton Mountain. Any other questions? I don't guess so. Any other members have questions on this particular field trip request? Okay. I can.
Well, I, you know, again, I was just concerned in regards to the facility itself. I have the website in front of me, and I'm just trying to find information on the, the campsite itself. Or, I mean, there are I just there are cabins. There are two cabins, one for male, one for female. Okay, so that was one of my concerns. Yeah. How many people are sleeping in each each cabin? But there are cabins available, and there are shower areas, and there are restrooms. I was going to say, I believe the uh, Superintendent Nash wanted to just add something about the particular facility. Yeah, I, I just know that in the past, um, in the district I was in, we've had um, young people attend the um, Morse Hill. It has an excellent reputation. Um, and I would certainly advise that we do make students and families aware of the mosquito repellent that they need to have with them. Um, and I think that that's probably a parent decision they're comfortable sending their child with that, um, then I think that that's where they need to weigh in on that. And I think it's an excellent facility and it's it's well taken care of and it's well regarded in educational circles. Anybody have a, uh, a number of chaperones you'd like to see, one to 10 or? Usually traditionally for school field trips, it's one to 10 adult per 10 students. So basically be the same way. And, and they provide their own staff for the, pro for the ropes programs. Yes. Yes. I'm, I'm taking that as a as a consensus for what you're agree. asking. Yeah, yeah, I'm sensing that folks are agreeing with that. I, unless anyone has a different number they'd like to suggest. So, okay. Thank you, Mr. Miller. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, any other questions or comments? Hearing none. All those in favor of approving the request, <laughs> say aye. 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 Opposed. Any abstentions? Okay. Uh, so we will now move into the reports and recommendations, and the first item is the business manager's report. Mr. McLaughlin. Thank you. Uh, in your packet, you have the business manager's report. I uh, just want to highlight just a couple of things for you because it is a short report. Um, a new budget going into the fiscal year of 2014 will be $25,507,768. Uh, that is represented by the initial funding of the 24 million plus the additional funding that came through uh, shortly thereafter from the uh, from the house of an additional 69,000 and then we had the override of 985,000 so when you put that together our budget going forward into 2014 will be the 25 million the contracts on there are listed uh, the mayor had at had added two additional contracts that came uh, at closer to the last minute. We were waiting for a few additional pieces of information. We had those, so uh, uh, we had a total of seven contracts this evening. Um, also in your packet, you have a financial statement. This financial statement is our year-to-date numbers through June 30th, 2013. Although it's not complete, we're still in the middle of closing out the year. We have journals, we have transfers, we have monies going to grants, monies coming from grants, going to revolving accounts, so there's a lot of movement at the very end. Um, the report you have shows a balance of $80,000 on that, but that, those monies will be transferred out. We have uh, um, the ability to have some of those picked up by grants and other accounts that we have versus the uh, local appropriation. So those transfers will be made in the next few days and by the end of August, we should uh, be completed with all of our adjustments and our journals and have a, uh, uh, a final number for the year. We will end the year at zero. We will balance, our budget will be balanced. And uh, uh, we will end with our initial budget that was on there of 24 million, 003643 and that is what we will have and thank goodness for grants and other revolving accounts. Um, I think that's going to be it. Okay. How about the personnel report? Personnel report is also in your packet. You can see the personnel report for the month of July. We had uh, nine uh, new hires listed. We had uh, two separations, three retirements, and four uh, promotions and transfers uh, for the month of July. Okay, thank you. Can, can you tell us anything about our new assistant principals? This is the first time we're seeing those names. Uh, 
Right. Well, um, Mr. Lombardi is here. He could perhaps tell us about, the uh, question was about the new assistant principal. Yes, uh, at the high school I can speak of, we were, we were um, fortunate enough to um, lock in our um, top selection, um, <coughs> Celeste Mulvesey. Um, she was a former assistant principal up in um, Gateway, and um, she accepted um, terms of the contract. And um, she also is a um, proud new mother, and so we're now kind of working out the specifics of when her start day is and working around maternity leave and all that. Um, but um, Dr. Nash met her today, and um, we're very excited. Um, we feel like we hit a home run by being able to get the caliber <coughs> administrator coming into our district. Thank you. Yeah. And um, the other. Yeah, I don't know if you can speak to that. I think Matt. Matt, obviously, I said. Um, we did hire our first uh, choice candidate for associate principal here at JFK, and it's Scott Andrew. Um, he was a former um, school adjustment counselor at Smith Folk, um, and prior to that, he was a dean of students at Smith Folk. Um, and he started actually two days ago, um, sorry, yesterday, um, <laughs> in with me right away, doing some interviews for some positions. And uh, we also feel like we hit a home run with him. And um, you know he's going to work out really well. Thank you. Those new positions, by the way, will show up in your August report for personnel. But you're ahead of the curve by the explanation. That's fine. I just wanted to know who was coming. Okay, and uh, now we'll turn to the superintendent report. Mm -hmm. Right. I have a brief one this evening. Um, first of all, I just wanted to say how um, pleasant it's been. I've met some of the board members. I've met um, all of the administrators, I believe, and um, some teachers and aides and secretaries as I've toured the schools. Um, Tracy uh, has been wonderful in getting me to and from schools. I think it's important I know where they're located. I think I can get to all of them. Um, and it's been a wonderful reception. People are really great. I think you've got um, many professional people here. Uh, and I've been very pleased with um, how helpful everyone's been. Um, what I've been doing with a lot of help from others is planning for opening day. Um, letters have gone out to all staff and all employees in the school system about our opening day exercises. Um, we've also planned the administrative team's retreat and uh, administrative meetings for the year. So we have those in place. Um, Could you tell us when that retreat is scheduled? Yes, that's number four. <laughs> That's you brought it up. Yeah. <laughs> um, and I hope you have received materials on that. You should have. Um, also, I've been uh, working with uh, Brian when he was here and um, now hiring teachers and administrators um, since I started on the 26th. Um, we're also been working to wrap up negotiations, which uh, Two of the board members have been involved in um, for most of this year, I, I expect. But we need a couple more meetings, and um, I think we're still on track to bring the negotiated contracts to the board at your September 12th meeting for ratification. So we're finishing that up. And um, we're also notified core teachers of the need to uh, register for a course in retail which is um, courses uh, available for teachers with regard to uh, English as a second language students and the need for them to be certified in that area. So we've done that this summer. Um, I've also um, found a potential candidate for the Director of Academic Effectiveness. That's the point four position, which is in the central office. And we're working out the details of hiring at this point. So you'll know that person at your next meeting. And there was a retreat um, planned for administrators and school committee. I hope everyone got a copy of it. And uh, we're looking forward to the board joining us on Thursday, August 22nd, uh, from 5 to 7.30. And the meeting will be at Smith College Conference Center. I believe you've been there before. I think that's where it was last year. Um, so we're looking forward to having you join us then, and we all have a program planned and uh, a lot of interaction because we do have new um, administrators, and I think it's important that board members and administrators get a chance to interact and know each other. So we'll have something planned for that evening. Can you tell me if the materials were mailed or if they were emailed? Yeah. Mailed. Mailed. Okay. Maybe that's why. Stephanie and I have neither one received okay. them. Anyone else? 
They may they may be there today or tomorrow. I just wanted to confirm because last year there was a thing of time. We're to be there from five to seven thirty. Is that's okay. correct? Perfect. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah. So it's Stephanie and um, Lisa that needs one. It, ours may be there. Sometimes Florence the mail tomorrow. Yeah, Florence okay. mail is kind of wacky. Okay. All right. Yeah, and I had a similar. I, I did get a package of a, a letter that had to do with the uh, beginning of the school, so the convocation. Yes, they were all together, I believe. No, I did not. Some, okay, maybe maybe I just right. didn't. I'll check do tomorrow. A good job of reading. I'll check tomorrow and make sure that everyone gets copies. Um, and uh, I, I've also had um, a really good meeting with um, Director of Recreation for Northampton, Anne Marie Moggio. Um, we um, looked at what's currently a memorandum of understanding between the uh, rec department and the school system from 1999. So we're both in agreement that it needs to be revised um, and we're going to be working together to put together a draft document that will go to budget and property committee. So we're working on that. She's great to work with. I've enjoyed meeting her. Um, I've also met with a parent and resident of Northampton who had some information she wanted to share with Mark and myself with regard to um, budgetary matters, finance, and um, that was also a very good meeting and I'll be working um, with Mark and with that person as well. So, um, so far, so good. Looking forward to being here. I enjoy the, the uh, chance to continue learning and the challenge. Thank everyone. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, the next item on the agenda are the uh, annual votes uh, approving uh, school handbooks um, uh, for both uh, JFK Middle School and Northampton High School. Um, and we'll begin with uh, JFK and um, Associate Principal uh, Collins presenting that one. Hello again. Um, I took the liberty before the meeting to just to put on everyone's table. I believe a copy of the handbook before for us to uh, just some of the changes that we made. But then I outlined the changes um, by putting the old way on the um, the address guidelines in blue and the new way in green. And what we did is we met as a school council with uh, the administrative team, um, teachers that are on the school council, and parents that were on the school council, and discussed some of the address guidelines that we had. Um, and we also spoke to students um, through our forum activity in regards to the dress guidelines. And we realized that the way it was written in the past um, it may have been a little bit confusing for the students. So we wanted to clarify it. So there's, not, there's no changes to the guidelines. It's just um, the wording that we changed, just to make it a little bit more um, user friendly. Uh, for some reason, if you notice on the, the green form, my numbers aren't lining up, but they do line up. Um, with each other in the in the book. So those changes that were made were just done in the wording just to make it a little bit more user friendly for both the parents and the students as they're looking towards buying school clothes for the upcoming year that would be um, that would fit into our dress guidelines. Another change to the to the book um, to the to the student handbook um, is under our area of cheating and plagiarism and that's also on a green form and it's listed as old way and new way. And what we found last year was there were a couple instances of kids plagiarizing but not realizing what plagiarism was. And in the old way, the first offense was a zero on the assignment um, or the test and the teacher would contact the parent. And um, we felt that that was a little harsh, especially if the, if the students didn't really know what plagiarism was. So what we did is we changed that to the first offense would be the teacher does not accept and tells a student. Um, the teacher conferences with the pupil, stating, I'm not sure that this is your educational piece. Parents are contacted, and the usual time frame will be set to resubmit the work. So they wouldn't have to take a zero on the work to resubmit it for a grade within that given time frame. Um, and the student is referred to guidance um, just for some conferencing. More information can be given to them at that point on plagiarism and how it can affect them in the long run. It really should be a learning experience. Um, and then on the second offense, once they've already been conferenced on plagiarism, then the assignment would become a zero um, and it could result in a one day suspension. Any questions? Just 
just have a question in regards to um, their understanding of plagiarism, and I, I'm wondering that uh, is there in any of the, the English classes or whatever class it might be where a teacher takes them through a research paper and talks to them about how to put something together? Yes, what I did is I met um, Sal Kanata and I, our old um, assistant principal or associate principal, we met with the teams and we spoke with them about the issue of plagiarism and the fact that some kids just might not understand what it is, especially you find it more in sixth grade, they're just coming in and they're starting to do these more lengthy assignments, maybe making some uh, pamphlets up for directions or something like that, and they don't realize that taking it word for word is something you can't do. Um, so we asked them to make sure that that's discussed in the English language arts and reading, class, reading classes, as well as in kind of at the beginning of the year to go over that, maybe in the forum. Um, we talk about study skills and what some expectations they have. And Leslie and Scott and I planned on talking about that with the teachers at the beginning of the school year, as well as when we meet with the students in the team setting here as well. So that way, we're trying to reinforce it a little bit. There's no students want to be called a cheater, you know, and they don't mean to cheat. Um, they just need to understand, well, not always, they just need to understand that you know, what they did isn't acceptable and they need to fix it. Yes, sir. So are we then equating that the, the same thing would happen with cheating? So if a student is caught cheating on a test? Well, we, we, we listed it as cheating slash plagiarism um, because the, the other thing that happens is, is students today often work together in groups. Right. Um, and sometimes when they're working on a, a quiz or a test, you know, they might share information with each other or we might get information that so-and-so gave the, the questions away to another student in the hallway not realizing that that student was taking the same test so we would conference them on that as well if it's a blatant i'm going to look on your paper and cheat then i think the administration would handle that um, on a case-by-case -case basis depending on the situation other Just questions please. about yeah the, uh, Mr. Sure. I have a question about the um, school dress guidelines. Sure. Uh, on the old way, it talks about covering the shoulders, meaning cloth is at least one and a half inches, and then it's not put in that any longer. And I have a, um, a niece that goes to another school district, and the shoulders and all of that is, is a really big deal, and I'm just wondering if it's, if it's clear enough now. I liked the one and a half inches. I mean, it gave you a definite guideline. Mm -hmm. Are we taking it out because we don't care if it's one and a half inches any longer? Um, not necessarily. What happens sometimes is, and I know what you're talking about. The, are you talking about the shirts and the tops? I'm talking, yeah, number three on yeah. the blue. Um, the only way have to wear shirts or tops that cover the shoulders and fall below the belt areas. And what we did is we we felt that if so what times what happens sometimes is the kids, um, you know, fall off one shoulder and not the other. And and unfortunately, this this seems to happen with the girls more than the boys. And um, <laughs> um, well, that's a whole we, style right now. That, yes. That, 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 yeah. That but cut off. Felt, as short. long as their undergarments weren't showing, um, then then that would be acceptable, also within reason as well. Okay. So, getting to the style, that that open cut it cut the t-shirt and stuff. Um, their undergarments would only show one if they were wearing them, or two if they were wearing ones that had straps. I mean, so is it okay to have shoulders to have it if they're not if they're if they're not having undergarments show? Um, that's a good question. I got, let me just read this real quick. Well, it actually does say here if you look under the in the print in the parentheses, um, bare midriffs, halter tops low cut tops, backless shirts, muscle shirts, off the shoulder tops or two tops are not right. um, something that the school would like to see worn to school. Um, it's just they separated it out. They just changed the wording a little bit. So revealing clothing and exposed undergarments are not acceptable, i.e. bare midriffs, halter tops, low cut tops, backless shirts, muscle shirts, off the shoulder tops or two tops, which would take okay. off the shoulder. So what we're doing then is just taking out the covering the shoulder so that right. it's okay if one drops and not the other, is what you're saying? Okay. Thanks. Sure. Any other questions? Okay. Any other questions about the policy manual in general? Okay. I, had, I had one small just edit, I guess, I was going to ask for. I don't know. If sure. And that's just in the, um, in the school committee listing. Note that you have um, Mr. Zahowski listed as vice chairperson. Okay. Um, I think 
think that should be vice chair. Vice chair, okay. Um, and then actually, under uh, my name is fine, Mayor David Narkowitz, but that should probably be comma chair. Okay. Um, uh, so that that would be the only change that I would make. The charter is now clear about chair and vice chair okay. um, for the school committee. So, yep. <laughs> Other questions or comments? Hearing none, could I so get a motion, motion to approve the JFK? JFK handbook. Is there a second? Second. Okay. All those in favor of approving the handbook for the upcoming school year, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Next on deck is Principal Lombardi with the Northampton High School. And to start off, I've made the change already to the um, chair, vice chair. <laughs> it's kind of getting ahead of it a little. Okay. Um, I believe you were already sent and given a copy of our handbook. Um, we really have no major changes. The changes that you have are highlighted in blue. They're tending to be more in changes in um, staffing, idols year to year, information that changes as we go. Um, some of the additions as well was a um, part about um, gender identity, which was a new rule in the uh, state. We put a clause in there about that. There was also um, technology, user technology um, change um, given to us by Angela Roto in regards to bring your own device and what are the regulations of if you bring your own device into school. Um, beyond that, we're not doing any changes of policies or procedures um, within the handbook. So I'm pleased to answer any questions. Um, Mrs. Minnick? Not so much a question, but a comment. If the uh, whatever it verified and unverified on those absences is a change, I like it because it's uh, it's finally. I read the whole section. I think it's finally almost clear. <laughs> it's taken us a while, but we've gotten there. And this this was again. I think a lot of parents were confused. I've called my child in. Yeah. Why am I having an issue? And we, we were always because it said home. excused and unexcused, and yeah. it was just always confusing for parents. So I appreciate that you've come up with some other vernacular that Thank clarifies you, everything. Perfect. <laughs> um, on that note, though, there was, there was I knew exactly what it meant, but I'm not sure it was. I don't even know if, what the right way to say it would be is if they've exceeded the minimum attendance. Yep. Which would mean if they attended every single day, that would be exceeding minimum <laughs> attendance. So it's not exactly right. I know what you meant was they exceeded the maximum absence, but well, it says it under. But anyway, <laughs> under B, minimum attendance requirements. Really, what had, should happen is there should be a sentence in there that says students are required, or students may have no more than the below absences. Exactly. It anyway, it's, it's funny because it's like a double negative without yeah. being a double negative, and it's just okay. so. So say did not meet minimum minimum attendance. Did not right. meet minimum attendance. Well, right. I'm getting confused. Then I know my students are. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wasn't confused. I knew exactly what you meant. If you have more absences than that, yeah. you know. Okay. Um, and then the, a general thing that um, I think we should. I don't. I think it's fine for this this handbook, but it's something maybe during the course of the year. I don't know who, whose project this would be, whether it be the school council or something, but to look at the various um, the sanctions in the discipline code. Because as I go through and I look and compare some of the offenses with some of the, the sanctions, and I wonder really if this is actually, you know, like the swearing has the same thing as injuring somebody. You know, and I'm going, wait a minute, you know, maybe there should be a different thing. Um, there was another one where you injure someone on the bus, you get two weeks off the bus maximum, and then you get back on the bus again with another two weeks after the second offense. And it's like, wait a minute, if you injured somebody on the bus once and we let you back on, you injure somebody again, we're going to let you back on? Yeah. You know, I mean, that's, it, 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 you know, but that was the same exact sanction as smoking on the bus or swearing on the bus. Which brings me to my third point, which is um, I, we need to, at some point, conform the school committee's transportation discipline policy with the, what's in the handbook, because they are different in little particulars. We have, a, we have some specific things, 
and so I'm not sure if that's happened, but it, uh, earlier, a couple months ago, it had not yet happened. So that's sort of more for the for us to look at. Um, Sounds like a rules and policy thing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Could mean that, Mr. Morris. I can definitely make that part of the agenda for over the year to involve my school council, um, as well as my um, student council, in regards to reviewing the handbook, taking a look at our um, code of conduct and the appropriate consequences and how are. Yeah, just to see. I can if definitely tell you that there are some things in there that. Um, it, it's a ceiling. Yeah. You know, you know, and, and that's some of them are, some are expressed time. in minimums, some of them are expressed in maximums. Exactly. And I understand they've all evolved over time and it's yeah. not, you know, but maybe it's time at some point to look at it and see if, yes. to rationalize it a little bit. Yep, absolutely. So I can definitely make that part of the, our agenda for that. Mrs. Minnick. You fully and completely done over here, Howard? I think I am. Those are my three points. Okay. Um, I just wanted to ask the, uh, I realize that this is the, the student handbook and it's not the only place that it's listed, but it's maybe one of the few places that I see it. And I would love the school activities and clubs. There are several of them that have initials, abbreviations, acronyms. I would love to see those names spelled out so that I, or, I mean, I would actually like to know what Inven Team is or... Um, PG what? Or PG I don't see that one. In the bottom right hand corner, it's page number. 15, sorry. Um, what? GSA, no. Most. Yeah, yeah, well, yeah, most and GSA. I know what SOCA is, but I mean, there were a couple of others that I just didn't even know. What is caught off guard? That's an, uh, gotcha. <laughs> I can go through and tell you, but I think okay. you're, you're making a point. The Caught Off Guard is an improv group. Oh. Um, GSA is Gay Straight Alliance. Okay. Most is, um, I forgot what the acronym means, but I can tell you where it's, it's on graphic art novels. Um, they get together and they make um, graphic art um, novels. Okay. But I think your, your point's accurate. We should have some, you know, a well, full explanation are, of what it is. The ones that are letters, it probably Absolutely. would make sense to spell out. The rest of them you could probably. Hmm? There was uh, you, and best buddies. That sounds like, that sounds like a oh. best, best buddies actually is a national program. It's a um, program where you take a student uh, in the student body and you assign them with a significant special ed student, maybe in a life schools, and um, they they get together on a monthly, weekly be basis for activities. Sometimes it's dances. Sometimes it's getting together making. Um, gingerbread houses, um, going to, and supporting them in a variety of ways. Um, some of the students will, will do activities on weekends, may go bowling. So it's an integration mentoring program, access to um, social and academic activities within the building. Okay, as long as you're on a roll, what is Open Arms Group? Open Arms. Ms. Minnick, you're catching me on that one. I am going to uh, <laughs> find out. All right. Okay. Um, <laughs> They come so quickly sometimes. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to sit there and make up something for okay. like it's about hugging That's or anything. Right. I assume um, it's something very uh, beneficial to students. <laughs> yes, they, they, they tend to. Um, I will find out. If it's Miss Power Greens, I'm sure it has something that is involved with community community service um, mentoring, without a doubt. So I will, I'll definitely find out. Just shoot us all a quick email like that? that says. Yep. You can expect that within the next week or so. Thank you, Brian. Yeah. Any other questions for uh, Principal Lombardi? Move to okay. Approve. Okay. There's been a motion made to approve the handbook for North Hampton High School. Second. Second. All those in favor, uh, say aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? No, I do have one more question, though. It won't change my vote. But okay. I just Fine. really wanted to know. Uh, toward the beginning, there were some there were some additions of new language. Did those come as a result? Of, it was an omission and the ask. The, the okay, core values. Yes. Yeah, okay. Yep. That's what I thought. Thank you. Okay. So, I, I believe I called the vote. Correct. Did you record that? So it was unanimous. Okay. Great. Okay. You didn't change your vote. Thank you. Uh, um, okay. <laughs> So uh, the next item uh, with Principal Lombardi again is a report on our AP test results. Yep. Um, 
Yeah, we had, we had another successful year um, of high enrollment. We enrolled um, 439 students enrolled in a variety of um, AP um, test situations. Um, out of that 439, 354 earned a qualifying score of three or higher. Um, continuing to have success within the math, science, and ELA. For example, uh, 40 of 47 AP Chem students earned a qualifying score of four or higher. So uh, that's um, very, very, um, very well there. 42 of 54 AP environmental scores um, earned um, qualifying scores. What do you have to understand about that? We don't offer a, an AP environmental class. So the combination of students getting educated in our common environmental class on top of the work that Sue Biggs does when her AP curriculum is over, those combined are really working um, and is a testament that the education that's happening in the school that we can do so well on an AP test and yet not offer the class. Um, and that, that was a note, a special note from the MIMSI grant um, people. They were very impressed by that as well. Um, roughly 95% increase in biology enrollment of 40 students. Out of those 40 students, 34 received receiving um, qualifying scores. Um, we also had a new calculus teacher this year <coughs> taking over the realm of AP. And um, that continued um, rigorous standards of 23 of 24 students, again, earning um, qualifying scores. Our ELA score consistent with on past years, a little fluctuation, but again, um, high um, scores in qualifying. I qualify scores, excuse me. Any questions uh, for Mr. Lombardi about the AP results? Mr. Moore. Yeah, I have a question. I mean, I think you've probably, I, I, I'm sure, in fact, you mentioned something about this, this question. So this is a question you have already started to talk about before. Um, you know, how we're doing really well with increasing AP, so in a way of thinking of in terms of our depth within certain subject matters. Um, but at the same time, we, are struggling to figure out how to get more breadth in terms of other ways for kids who have sort of gone through the base level of, you know, the, sort of the prerequisites of, of a high school curriculum and other wa ways for them to sort of ex explore, sort of for go further. What we're, we have, we've really developed this AP track, but we don't have a lot of things in sort of other specialties or things that are not AP, but that would be, again, more advanced, but outside of those sort of the those kind of core subjects that most of the AP things are in. Mm -hmm. um, do we have any way to do that? Any way to measure? Given our person, yeah, given, our, given the number of teachers we have and the, and the you know, in our, um, in, our, in our four blocks and, you know, all those sorts of things. I would say that that would be a fundamental question we have to take a look at in uh, applying resources. I think what we've done is we've really created a mechanism in our school. A lot of other schools have been in it. They have, they have um, a lot of doors and hurdles to get to AP. So in our district, we just, we've felt that let's not put those, this, if a student wants to have access, they want to give it an opportunity, we've done that. And so by doing that kind of opening the doors, you've created doors to bring in people. So for example, um, I have one full-time English teacher um, teaching six AP junior English classes of about 25 to almost 30 kids. Now that's a junior class and, you're, and we're offering AP junior English to more than half of the junior class. Right. That's great. Yes. But what comes with that is that's a resource you need to offer that. Yeah. And to go another way to look into another category, if we wanted to um, have some advances and maybe you know bring some computer science and have multiple layers of that, or continue with art, we have multiple layers of, of art. It's, it's very clear um, to offer things in music, for example, where we could offer more advanced, or even lower for students that haven't had access to music. How do we get them there? It, it, it would be a shift, in my opinion, in and in a broader discussion about resources and how are we going to manage both? Um, the rigor that you have for AP and allowing access without having requirements, because when you have requirements of must take certain classes, must have certain grades to get in there, you whittle down the numbers and then you, you'll have less classes and then I have more teachers to use. Um, so it really is, I think, a decision discussion about what's important to us to continue to have advanced classes of high rigor standards that all students can have access to um, and how do we bring in these other things which are equally important for, for students as well? Um, I don't have a specific answer because I think it's much more in, in, it's part school 
I think it's also part of what Northampton is. What is it that we want to offer? I mean, I believe a school represents the community, and I think the great thing about Northampton is that we want access for all. Therefore, that translates into a school that doesn't have those um, requirements um, for AP. But I think the question you're asking really is a broader question. How do we balance both? How do we fund both? And what would that what would that, what would that look like? Because I, you know, I can easily again if you. I can do whatever you people want, you know, I can cut here, I can do this, but when I only have so much money to fund it and so, many, um, so much room, that's when your hands become tied. Yes, Howard, I'm sorry. Yeah, I was thinking as you were talking that one way we've done that actually is uh, with the uh, enrollment at Smith, that a lot of kids, that's how they get something that's not in, not in a regular track at the high school that is so it's a way to look into something that they're interested in that's at a, at a fairly high level. Um, and we've, so we've managed to use that, and, I, and, and that's been a really positive way for us to achieve that's a great, um, in our resources what, what I was talking about, a way to add some breadth to the curriculum. I think you're right. I think it's also, and, and I, thanks for bringing that up, it's a combination of um, not only what we want to do, but also what a resource we have available. So we're lucky to have um, access to Smith College um, where our seniors, um, have access to a, to a university that can they can take elective or interest-based classes. Same thing for GCC and HCC. There's some funding involved with those that are a little bit different depending on what. Um, I, I had a meeting discussion a meeting this morning with a gentleman. Um, we, we came in last year for some online classes and um, we had to figure out what, what kind of online classes. Um, the online classes have tended to be used for, in this package, for homebound students. Um, and I think, you have to, I think we have to decide, you know, cost-wise, is that the way to go? Or do we offer online elective classes that might meet some of those areas? Mm -hmm. um, that information came to me this morning. But I think it's a combination of us evaluating what do we want to do, what do we want to fund, combined with what are some resources that we have locally that can allow that. Um, but I think it is a great discussion to keep going because that is something that we talk about in the high school is what about the other areas which are just as valuable? How do we feed those? Um, and I think you know, obviously with the override we had th this year, that's kind of connected with that because those are the things we want to add, but they're kind of always in this limbo or close to being sliced off the table. So I hope I answered your yes, question. Thanks. Other questions or comments? Well, thank you very much for that report. We appreciate it. You bet. Thanks. Thank you, Brian. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks. Thanks. Okay. Uh, now I'll turn to our colleague, uh, Ms. Pitt, for an update on the superintendent search process. So not a whole lot more to report from last time. If you remember that we've, we've delayed our process. Um, the, I've spoke to Joe Wood um, last time this morning. Um, we will be meeting as a committee um, the week after school starts. Um, for the first time, we will uh, um, decide on our semifinalists the week after that and um, then interview the last week of September, beginning of October, and hope to bring um, finalists um, to school committee for the October 10th meeting. Um, at this point, we have 15 completed applications filed. Is that a good number, 15? Is that, are we happy with that number? Yeah. For this time of year, it's probably okay. If we were doing this in the spring, we would expect it to be higher. Um, I talked to Joe about that. Um, yeah, and it's kind of, you only need one good one. He, he, he referenced a, um, a, another district that also had what, what he would have considered a low number, but they had a couple of candidates that they were actually very, very happy with. Um, sometimes you can have a big number and not find somebody. It's as we experienced before. Don't don't really know if you know if we're not satisfied. We're, we're we've been clear as a committee that we're not going to choose somebody because we have to choose somebody. We're going to keep going, and, and if we have to do it again in the spring, we will. But we're going to hope to be able to do it this fall. Mr. Ball, are the application still um, available? I mean, open? Is it? Is yes. The process still open? Yes. Okay. And is it open now because we we moved it? We've now moved the deadline also. No. So when is the deadline? Do we? It, it actually doesn't close, but un until we until we start working, okay. um, there isn't a closing date. So is it safe to assume that the first week of September when you start, then that's when it's closed? 
Okay. Right. We're only going to be looking at the candidates that have come forward by the time we meet. Yeah. Because NESDAQ has to vet them. not going to accept any more. NESDAQ has to vet them before they can even bring the files to us. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Thank you very much. Sure. Okay. Um, are there any <laughs> new business items? Okay. Um, the future business and meeting dates, our next uh, school committee meeting will be September 12th, 2013 at 7.15 here at the JFK Community Room. And now I would entertain a motion to adjourn. So moved. Seconded. All those in favor of adjournment say aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Any abstentions? The school committee meeting is adjourned.